Mad Tobacco Road. Oh, yes, indeedy, which turns out to be what? The highway of life. Because suddenly, you know, you're going down that twisty, turning mountain road thinking you're doing something, getting away with this load, and graciously you're lifted, man, by the wings of angel flight. And off you go flying like a spaceship into the gracious nature of the night. A bright shining light in the sky, man, brighter than any star ever there were. There for everyone to see. You're flying high, don't you see? On a tripping Tuesday with your old grandfather of the heart, Grandpa Coyote. You know, the very founder of the Coyote Medicine Show, don't you know? Still aglow after all this time, babies, and it feels like I'm just barely starting to unwind. How about you, baby? You getting it too here? <laughs> Ever clear on the Hazy Radio Network, don't you know, dear? Oh, I tell you, hazyradio.com. This is the place to be early in the day. We'll save you each and every time. Well, of course, we're worldwide, so adjust your clocks accordingly. It's morning over here on the mountainside, I think. 5 a.m. when we begin, which is about noon in GMT time. Somewhere around there, so... You know, get on your time converters there on the internet. They're free. And put in your time, I mean 5 a.m. mountain time, and it'll tell you what time it'll convert it for you and tell you what time and day it is your time. Australians, you know, they're always a day ahead of us, pretty much, or half a day ahead of us, something like that. 17 hours difference, whichever way it is, I can't remember now. You know, the time is just like kind of winding down anyway, but... That's how you got to be to, in order to tune into the Coyote Medicine way, man, on this Coyote Medicine show. Each and every day, Monday through Friday, the jolly old guy himself, man, yeah. Don't you believe you can fly? I knew it, see? That's what I kind of look like. You know, I tell a few truck driver tales here and there. and Give you a little bit of the history of it sometimes just for the fun of it, you know. Get the flavor of real living here, you know, going on. Well, I look at all of my truck driving days and all my wayward ways and everything that I've been through is just training there so I could fly this spaceship with you, you know what I mean? We're just like, you know, everything is a movement towards the, the grace of uh, creation in motion, you know. And, and, you know, if for some reason or another, I had to be at the helm of the spaceship love. So, babies, I, you know, was top pilotage all of my life this lifetime, too, man. Because when I wasn't out there driving the big rigs, well, I'd be out there driving the little rigs up and down the highway anyway. I just couldn't stop myself from the journey, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, babies, it was crazy life, but, but more than worthy of living, I'll tell you. Because look at what it's given us all already, man. I mean, shit. You know, this old, old spaceship up just glows in the dark and brings back the sunlight each and every day, just the right and regular and rain and snow, don't you know, and the bright sunshine that makes it all happen, huh? Yeah, I tell you, see, that's how all life is, really. The bright sunshine makes it happen, you see. That's the direct energy of love <laughs> flowing through you into the rainbow of creation around you, baby. Wow, what a what a greatly centering place to be, man. What a gracious way of being given a life to be living, eh? I'd certainly say, see, so... I know all that training along the way, especially those, you know, near-death moments when, well, you knew you weren't going to die. Even though you knew you could, but you knew you wouldn't. You just knew, you know. It's like you know right now that, baby, there is a saving grace in everything. In all of our experience, you know, we've gotten away with it all and we're over with now what we've been doing before. You know what I mean, <laughs> Jelly Bean? It's time just to let that old paradigm go. See, it's it's having its death throes now and it's trying to be mean about it, you know, but just release that meanness from within yourself. Anything that would make you feel cold, dark, or deadly, just don't harbor it anymore. Just... <laughs> Be the love, wrap the love around it, see? Yeah. It's a revolution. A real revolution. See? It's a re evolution. A return to our true present state of being. A gathered together person happy to be alive in this reality and feeling every little spectacle of it and loving every little quiet moment in it and all that goes with it, man. It's all born of one little 
orgasmic place there beneath the Christmas tree of life, wouldn't you say? <laughs> oh, the metaphor we play, baby, on ourselves, day after day as we live away, see, the evolution is the revolution, you know, and that simple as that, and what is that? Resonation, man, you know, and resolution in the resonation because, you know, you finally got your own vibration going on. You start to recognize your personal place in this reality and therefore start to gain appreciation for it in a way you never have before, a way that even death couldn't show you, you know. I mean, this is life lived to the fullest extent possible in every moment you've breathed your way through. And babies, it designed itself that way. It says, this is what we're going to do this time around. What a jolly ride, eh? Oh my God, the sardonitry. But poetically so, beautifully so. We sacrifice our lives for everyone else all the time. Don't even know we're doing it, man. Shit. We're so deeply in service to one another and so synchronized in that service that you know, you can't miss. No matter which way you flow or how angry you get or depressed or, you know, whether you throw a fit or don't throw a fit or contribute to this cause or that one, whatever, it doesn't really matter, man. You know, what matters is the flow, the intention in your heart. That's what elevates you when you recognize that sincerity. See, this is what differentiates you from most everyone else you know. Because you've held that energy. You've always meant the best for everyone, even when you've been screwing up royally, especially then. You know, you just get desperate sometimes. You feel so alone. Like you're the only heart around that isn't a blood-sucking, you know, vampire or something, you know, an empty dark hole. You start to feel like you're living in a pit, you know, but you're not. It's total freaking paradise, man. Every breath you take in it, too, man. It just it, That's the real. And see, when your life is threatened, then you learn that's the deal. Because then you see the care of the angels in motion. You see the empowerment of the heart in a way you never could before. And perhaps you get all that through recollection, because when you're going through it, baby, you just take it for what it is and go with the flow of it. And that's a skill you're learning, too. You know, if you're going to pilot a spaceship, you've got to know how to get it through, man. And so you do. See, and it's in total synchronicity with those angelic presences that live a little outside the 3D, it seems, baby. They become visible at times like that. And their power and their energy very real. You know, oh, goodness. I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I probably will. It was back there about 83, I was taking a car out to deliver to a friend back east. A crazy deal. But I was a trip, and I hadn't been trucking for a while, so it was time for a little journey, a little vacation. I think it was like October. I love that season of the year in the Cascades. God, it's gorgeous. It's chilly as hell up there, but it, it's gorgeous going through those mountains, man. And then out into that vast desert of eastern Oregon. God, what wild country, man. I just love it. It'll always be like that. I don't care what the government or anybody else does. It's always going to be wild and beautiful out there, man. I know it. It just is, you know. It's like its own form of ruggedy-ass paradise, man, and beautifully so, man. Wow, talk about ruggedy-ass. Oh, gee. You know, if you get stuck out there on some of those lonely highways, you might not be found for a few days. And, of course, you ain't going to be there no more. You'd be a frozen little what, a popsicle stick, you know. <laughs> that poor thing. You know, but you don't think about those kind of things when you're traveling across there. You're just breathing in the paradise you're passing through, you know. And loving it for its ruggedy nature, too. With complete respect for that. So you always got your eyes alongside the highway you know, so forth. You're watching out for Mother Nature, so you ain't going to do nothing to her, you know. And suddenly, here I am, I, I look down to tune the radio, and I look back up, and they're just coming into my headlights, the range of my headlights, going about 70 miles an hour. I see these green eyes turning towards me, kind of glowing in the middle of the road there, and I'm like, holy shit, is that an E.T.? You know, and then I see the outline, 
of a great big old black Angus bull with a hump on his back. He's a big boy, about 2,500 pounds or so. I mean, he's big. I guess he, you know, well, it's open range, but they're entitled. But they ain't supposed to be entitled when you're coming along 70 mile an hour, man. Shit, what do you do, you know? Uh, but this was out in kind of a remote area, you know. I mean, there wasn't much out there. And a bull can easily knock down a fence any time it wants to. And that's probably what this guy did. Just decided he's big enough to go for a stroll now. And, you know, oops, wrong place, wrong time, you know. Well, maybe the right time in its own way. Who knows what kind of bigger tragedy this moment prevented. But anyway, long story short, wow, here I am 30 feet from this bull going 70 miles an hour, you know, he's right smack dab in the middle of the lane in front of me, man, and it's going to be, you know, almost, oh, anybody else would have panicked and, and slammed on the brakes and slammed into him and died, you know, no, not this guy, I got instincts, man, and I got angels help me fly, I threw that thing to the left, man, I hit that mother trucker sideways, and his head come, well, just tore the car apart, let's put it that way, the windshield exploded, in front of me and all kinds of shards of glass went everywhere and oh my goodness and there I was man sideways in the road you know well kind of straightened out a bit because of the impact of the bolt but you know cussing and swearing and oversteering a bit you know trying to get this thing back under me and it's like all of a sudden there's that sudden calm you know wham it's like a big hand a big warm hand came into my car through the ripped off roof and I hear this voice in my heart saying, Peter, you can do better than this. Get this thing under control. You're going to live to tell about this. If you just get it under control. Immediately I calmed and started steering and got it out. And got it to the side of the road, not but a hundred yards down from where I hit the boat. Whew, hairy ride, don't you know. Okay, now I'm walking back from this car. I got a flashlight in my hand. Just left the car there because I didn't know what kind of condition it was in. It's pretty dark out there. I have a flashlight. I'm equipped, you know. Ha! <laughs> Shit. But anyway, I'm walking up the road with this flashlight going back to that bowl because I know he's laying there in the middle of the road and I got to do something about getting him out of there, you know. Because there's going to be traffic. This is the uh, main drag between uh, Klamath Falls and and Lakeview, so there is some traffic on, especially that time of day, the evening, when people make their transitions, but they got to be working in the morning, you know, whatever. But, oh, here comes a big old chip truck ripping over the hill, and down towards that bowl going about 80, I figured, man, he was hauling ass. Those guys do, they go fast because they get paid to, you know. And it's risky business because they're big old high cube things with top heavy loads. You just, ooh, it's hairy ass shit. This guy was a really good driver. Thank goodness. At the last second, he saw that bull. And I just knew he was going to veer off right towards me. And I'm like not, you know, maybe a hundred feet down the road. I'm going to get hit by a big old semi-trailer truck. So I turned and start heading for the fence to the side of the road, but my legs were like rubber. I just, you know, I mean, I was moving, but it felt like I could barely move. I, the inevitability of the moment. I thought I was going to get slammed by a big old truck, and that was that, you know. I thought how ironic it would be. You know? <laughs> Cause I'd probably done a million and a half, two million miles by then. I don't remember, but I had quite a few of them under my belt, you know. But this was driving a little dinky old Chevy Spectrum. Man, I was lucky to live to tell about this. Blessed by the angels indeed. And then this truck, last second he veers off to the left instead of the right, and I'm safe. And I'm like going, oh my God. I was still 15 feet from the fence, man. I mean, wow. But, ah, I lived to tell about that one. That truck driver kept it upright somehow. Did a quick veer and missed the bowl, man. And then he slams on the binders and puts on his four ways and backs up a bit. He's a double box thing, so it's a little difficult, but backs up a little bit and leaves them flashers on so you can see the glow of the bowl there, you know, in the middle of the road. And then along comes this little car with a family and a little Subaru. Holy shit. I, oh, man, no, not a family, not a Subaru, you know. Last second they saw it and veered off into the ditch and everybody was okay. I mean, on the left side, you know. And then another car come, but he'd seen what was happening. By then there's enough blinker, blinker lights and commotion down there, even in the dark of the high desert. 
uh, you can see something going on, you're going to slow down. Even an idiot will. So thank goodness for that. The rest of the cars and shit that came along got through safely. And, you know, we got the guy pulled out. Another guy came along with a big old 4 by 4 and we got the, the, guy, the Subaru pulled out of the ditch and the bowl pulled off the road. And then there was a cop, you know. And, of course, you had to deal with all of that. But then I'm then I'm like, you know, standing alone out there in this desert after all that commotion and all that goes on, three, four hours of it, you know. And I still got glass in my eyes. I can feel that, shards of glass in my eyes, and shards in my hair. But I don't dare do anything with them, you know. And I'm like, God dang, what am I doing now? Why did I let everybody go? I should have got that vehicle towed out of here. But by then I determined that it was still running and... Even though it was going a little sideways down the road, the basic frame was twisted. I thought, well, maybe I can get it back to Klamath Falls. I'm stupid like that. I'm such a moron sometimes. I like to make things difficult for myself. And that's what I've done that night. And it was just an amazing moment, standing under that sky full of stars. It was a brilliant night that night. It must have been 3 o'clock in the morning by now. You know, i got to turn around and go back, you know. And uh, with this twisted car, and I'm just standing there going, Oh my God, this is going to be an adventure. And I turned that sucker around and headed back toward Klamath Falls, maybe 30 miles away, you know. And a uh, little bit of a mountain range passed through there, so I knew I'd just, I'd just take it easy. And geez, oh, that glass come blowing up from everywhere, and uh, it was colder than hell. Oh my God, so I just put the flashers on running along about 45. And man, I was about freezing to death, and thank goodness there's this one little cafe, a little, you know, wood stove with a cafe built around it out there in the woods of the high mountains of Oregon, you know, and thank goodness it was open that time of day, and I got in there and got me a cup of coffee and got myself warmed back up after a while. Nice little wood fire burning, yeah, and how. And then I made it the rest of the way. I got to Klamath Falls maybe an hour before the break of day, you know. And I was covered in glass shards. It was in my clothes. It was everywhere, you know. But the dude was kind enough to rent to me a motel room. And I just uh, calmly went in and removed my threads, as, you know, where I wouldn't get on the tile floor where I could sweep up the shards of glass and, and uh, got myself in the shower and gently shampooed the glass out of my hair and, and uh, I got away with it. I had a few little nicks on my face from this, but that's the worst injuries I had. And then I had to do my eyes, and I just kind of held them wide and let the water flow through them. You know, it takes a little a little uh, uh, will to do that, but I had to do that. And God, I, it all came out. Magic, miracles. I couldn't believe it, man. I was like, okay, when I got out of that shower, I knew life was going to be rocking. I'd made it. I'd made it through another one of my little Mr. Magoos, man, I tell you. And I was going to not only live to tell about it, I wasn't going to have to go to no damn doctor. Cause, oh, I like to avoid them when I can, man. It's rough business, you know. I won't go any deeper than that right now. But as to say, I wasn't my preference. I was glad this little miracle happened, you know. And finally, I could get some rest, you know. So I conked out for a couple hours there in that hard old motel bed. I must have woke up about 8.30 in the morning, which only was maybe an hour and a half, I guess. And the sun was shining through the curtains. I hadn't closed the curtains yet. So I got up, and I looked out, and there's that car sitting in front of my motel room or what's left of it. I mean, it's bent. In the daylight, you could see this. I couldn't see it so well in the dark. It's bent in the middle from the impact with the big old heavy bolt. You know, and the top is ripped clear back into the trunk and like sticking up like a great big old sail or something. <laughs> and this car is done. I mean, done. The headlights are still there. How did that happen? The headlights, it was the way I hit the bowl, I guess. The headlights are still there. I mean, you know, it's still functional. I just couldn't believe it, you know. Well, shit. I got on the phone to this dude that I was transporting the vehicle for. I need my own vehicle. And, you know, I says, look, I know I told you last night that I could drive this thing back over the Cascades. But holy shit, I just saw it in the daylight, man. I don't want to drive that thing another two feet. It's over. 
Well, he threw a fit, made me feel guilty, you know, and obligated. You said you could do that. Okay, Mother Trucker, I'll do my best, but don't blame me if I call you from up there in the Cascade somewhere in an even worse situation. And that's on you, man, all of it, dollar-wise and otherwise. You know, I've been a little tough on the guy, you know. I'm feeling a little abused right then, you know. But I just go with the flow, dudes, dudettes. That's what I do, man, you know. I mean, this is, you got to understand, I'm a bit more retarded than I am now. <laughs> I'm still learning and growing. How old would I have been? I don't know. Young 40s, late 30s. Yeah, see, I'm still rascally, man, you know. And, and fuzzy around the edges. So something like this didn't seem like too big a challenge. I just have to be creative about it. And, you know, I found uh, a car wash down the street. And I vacuumed the dang thing out, you know, glass, 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 everywhere. But I got a lot of it. You couldn't get all of it. It was just everywhere, you know. But I got most of it, a good share of it. And then I found this second-hand store and bought myself. I couldn't find a good zoot suit or ski suit like, so I bought this big old wool blanket, and I would wrap that around myself in the car going up over the mountain. I understand there's no windshield, so this is like riding a motorcycle down the highway, kind of. You get hit direct by the wind. And I couldn't find no road goggles, so I adapted a pair of uh, acetylene welding goggles to my face and uh, made that work for me, you know, and headed on out west after I gassed it up, headed on west. And God, I nearly froze to death going over their mountain. And again, there was glass everywhere, you know. But I kept it out of my eyes this time. I got a little in my hair, but I knew how to wash it out. Now I'd be okay that way. So I wasn't too worried about it or in my clothes either. I'd be okay. I just, you know, I had like that big woolly blanket. So it mostly went in that blanket. And I hadn't paid too much for it. I'd hate to throw it away. But if it's filled with glass, goodbye, you know. Anyway, then, you know, we made it. And I got over the mountain, but I was froze to death. God. I mean, this is October, and even in the daytime up there, like 30 degrees in the sunlight, you know, at the best kind of conditions. It was a little colder than that this morning. I should have waited a while. I should have waited till the afternoon, but there I was. And so finally about 10, 11 o'clock, I got down there to uh, probably about 11 o'clock, maybe noon, down there to this little tiny little town at the bottom of the mountain there. God, Eagle Point, I think it is. I can't remember for certain, but there's a little mom and pop cafe there. So I pulled up alongside it and went in, and unwrapped, and, and, and you know, I could barely move. I was so cold, but I did it. I went in and got a bowl of soup, you know, and, and a cup of coffee, and, and uh, had a little chatter with the local folks, you know, and, and I got myself warmed up a little bit. And, I must have sit there for an hour, an hour and a half, because I finally quit shivering after a while, you know. My muscles started to relax a little bit. They were all tightened up when I went in there. My flesh was froze a bit here and there, too. But pretty overall, I did pretty dang good considering, you know. And finally, I'm warmed up enough to proceed, and the sun's way up in the sky, and now it's getting warm out there. We're down in a lower elevation alongside the Rogue River now, and that's all, I guess got another 30, 35 miles to go, and it's a beautiful, gorgeous drive, and I'm not, I'm just going to take it slow, and it'll be okay, I'll get there, you know, and so I just lay down to take a little nap there in the hot sun, you know, for a moment, you know, and to tell you the truth, to tune into the angels and spirits and tell them thank you for, you know, the loving assistance that's got me there, and for saving my life again and again throughout this event, you know, and, and uh, I was really in a good state. I was, you know, kind of over there on the other side a little bit, but still inside my body there. But, you know, when I'm in those states, sometimes the body goes into kind of a suspended state and there's not a lot of breath, you know, and stuff, not a lot of movement. I'm just like there, but my, my conscious presence is you know, somewhere across the universe, you know, in another form of a communicative way. And so anyway, that's the state I was in. And somebody saw me there and, and went and called the cops and reported a dead man lying in a wrecked car by mom's cafe there, you know. <laughs> Next thing I know, 
I'm coming to my I, I all of a sudden I'm forced back in myself there and there's a cop ripping open what's left at the door there beside me. Are you all right, mister? You know, so, and I was like, oh, shit. You know, it touched my heart that somebody would care so much, but I hadn't thought about what an awful sight, because, you know, I was a little, I had only had like, what, an hour and a half sleep or something like that, and, and I'd been really stressed and stretched. I mean, my truck driver nature was, you know, getting me through, but son of a gun, you know, I was stretched to the bone, man, but I only had another 30 miles to go, and I didn't give a shit, I was going to do it, you know, but wow. I didn't think of what that must have looked like, that old guy, old, young old guy laying there in, in in this wrecked car, you know, with the seat leaned back, and his, and then doesn't look like he's breathing, you know. I mean, what would you think, you know? <laughs> I didn't think about that, or I wouldn't have caused such a uh, consternation there, but oh well, away we go. But you see how you get this training, you know? And mainly things like that just teach you and get through anything, no matter how insane it gets or how stupid you are for going along with it. You know what I mean? It is wild. And then, then even after all of that, now we get the car back, get delivered, put the insurance claim in, and you know, all of a sudden the insurance says, "Hell no, we're not paying for that." And then we go through a whole nother, you know, long list of litany of, you know things that they're just trying to dodge and weave and not pay a dime on it. I'm stuck in the middle and I don't have the coin to cover it at the time. I'm going to have to sell some horses and this is my family to pay this debt, you know. And uh, son of a gun, you know, I was a bit of a horse rancher then, trail stringer too. I did all kinds of things back in those days, you know. But then I had this... Uh, attorney friend up in Seattle and I just happened to see him a few days after these incidents as I was back to trucking you know and uh, I stopped there in Seattle to see him person like and he invited me over so I did and uh, he gave me some advice and I used it his guy was really wise he was not an ambulance chaser but he's the kind of guy that stood up for the little guy he used to work for a huge insurance company. He was their general counsel. Now that's pretty big time in this reality. You know, that's a powerful position. He gave it all up and all that multi-million dollar income to come and work for like a six-figure income, which still ain't bad even, you know, and help out the people of the Seattle area, you know. So he was a real noble guy, but he really gave me some wise advice and I won't go into details because it's petty. But it got the insurance company white in the face when they realized that they might have more than a little car to pay for, that this, could this uh, uh, award we were seeking could substantially grow when there was some heavy hitters behind it that knew the insurance game and how it was played. And once that message was conveyed in a very direct but subtle sort of way, there was a payment made within three days. They called up the next morning and says, Listen, we're going to settle. <laughs> Whew. Isn't that funny how, you know, one little moment like that can graduate into so much drama in your life, man. It gets really crazy, you know. And it even has further implications than that. I could go on and tell story after story of the impact of that little moment when that bull stepped out in front of me and I thought he was an E.T., I thought I was going for a spaceship ride. Well, I did, but it was a little in a little different space than I ever thought I would. And I was in the ship up to my eyeballs, <laughs> shipping it here, shipping it there. But we got her done, man. You know, and what this stuff just proves to you—the resilient nature of your heart. That really, if you are sincerely intended, the right stuff's going to come your way, even when the wrong stuff does, and you're going to be okay. You get through, you, you learn a resilience, you learn an appreciation for life through those resilient moments. And you learn to have a whole lot more faith in yourself. What little you know of, even in times like these, you know. We're still just barely starting to know what we might possibly be our, you know. <laughs> but moments like these, baby, that's been the grace. You know, trying moments, yes. I mean, stretch it to the max, man, but that's the grace, baby. It, it just... It just, the magic that happens 
and gets things cleared up when there's the worst kind of difficulties and your life is threatened and shit, you know, or your financial future, etc., you know. When you don't have a lot, you're always living on the edge, man, you know. And back then I was I was trucking a little, I was horse trading a little, I was like trail stringing a whole bunch, you know. I mean, I was just, it was crazy, crazy times, man. But, but, you know, you do what you do to get by, man. And somehow I had the energy for all of it, you know. And then to take a little vacation, go deliver this car. I was going to spend 10 days out there, party down with my friend out there in the Carolinas somewhere, man. You know, it, it was like, but, you know, instead I wound up with all this other whole litany of events and moments and changes in my life. But, you know, it just kept proving to me again and again the magic in the life because I just kept flowing with it like that. There'd be something difficult and there'd be something to resolve it. It just kept going and going. It was intense. It was like that for a while because I just turned the flow of my life in that direction for a while. But it just kept resolving too. Just as just as weird as it would get coming in, it'd be just as quick and weird in resolving itself too. It, Amazing how that went. An interesting time in my life. But you know, again, a great training in going with the flow, especially when it's difficult, don't you know? Because that's when it's most visible. That's when you really do know the way to go. But you see, sometimes you doubt that and you go this way instead of that and then the flow's got to take you that way instead of this. <laughs> that's how it appears from inside your hide anyway. The real right is, is you're always going in the direction of the flow that the direction wants to take you. That the heart is the direction. And you're always going the way it needs to go. And you're always doing and going through what you need to see to bring you to see and how this really be. That, you know, this is, this is, is our saving grace. The whole, whole lot of it. And it's not a farce or a misunderstanding. It's an understanding the flow of the way things go, see. And some of us, you know, if we're going to pilot spaceships, baby, we got to go through a pretty severe and brutal training ground sometimes, eh? Well, that's what we did here in this lifetime, man. That's what I'm talking about, man. All of that. The bowl and the bullshit that went with it, you know. Just beautiful. Great training, man. That's like, I got a class 3A out of that one right away. <laughs> Whatever the hell that was back in the day. We had chauffeur's licenses then. We didn't have these CDL things. A whole different world, man. But, you know, it was far more graceful, too. But we're coming back to that. I ain't bitching. I'm blessing. The experience of a lifetime and the many that preceded it and the ever-living life that just goes on forever that is an element of that. You know, and that's an element of this. This grand life that we're living, the greater whole that we are, man. Ho, 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 and Merry August, everybody. And by the way, babies, do talk about gathering. This weekend is the Crest Fest, starting coming Friday, man. So you got to be there, the Crest Home Music Festival. Fly in, take the hand cart, hitch up the ponies, do whatever you got to do, man, to get here. Hitchhike, man. Well... Depending on how seasoned you are on the highway, if you know what you're doing, hitchhike. If you don't, well, take a bus, Gus, okay? <laughs> it's less hazardous. Because <laughs> you can't get a bus all the way to Moffat, Colorado, which is just a mere 13, well, it's only like 12 miles or 11 miles from the fest. You could walk that if you had to, but you'll get it right. People are real graceful around here, you know, and they know the f festival time. The heart kind of goes up a notch or two here. and People are a little kinder to one another and shit like that, you know. So rides are real common and don't worry about it. And accommodations, well, there's lots of areas to camp in, but, you know, uh, there's people that'll take you in, too. I mean, you know, there's some good-hearted souls here, so don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. Come on over and party with us. And if that's, you know, just not possible for you right now, I understand. So you'll be there in heart then, right? Yeah. <laughs> Get on your own spaceship. Get high, baby. Fly with us this weekend. Well, we're already doing it, man. It's a trip on Tuesday, don't you know? What do we do on uh, Tuesdays but trip? I mean, baby, you know, this is it. 
This is life. This is the flow. This is the medicine of the real coyote medicine show in your life, baby. You see, it's kind of like you're on TV now, how they used to take this common person, this secretary that was so devoted and loyal and stuff, or somebody like that out of life and bring them on this special TV show back in the 50s, you know. And they'd had a show called This Is Your Life. And, and they would bring them on stage and tell them they were one of the greatest souls to ever live and put them on a king or a queen-like chair. And then they'd start to review all the nice things they'd done for everybody along the way. And a lot of people that they'd really helped out in life but nobody noticed, you know, would come and thank them and honor them and stuff. Well, see, that's the process we're opening up to as persons right now, each one of us. Even you, yes, even you. Yeah, oh, especially you, baby. You need it. <laughs> Don't we all, man? A little buffing up here inside, man. Get us taking this ride a little lighter, you know. Don't let the heaviness ever again weigh you down, man. Enough is enough, man. Take it lightly. Shine brightly. Take it lightly, you know. And that just means to live in the resonation of your true heart. To appreciate where you are and all the magic we've been living in, man. I mean, wow, you know, tall tales today as we trip away, huh? Got balls to the wall and then some, wouldn't you say? No, I'm not going to play that right now. Some of these records all wear out. I mean, you know, I can't do that, man. These performers get tired, you know. Fall off the stage every now and then. I don't like that when it happens. Unless they got wings and fly, then it's cool. <laughs> oh, babies. Yeah, you want to be here this weekend for the Crestone Music Festival, get to thecoyoteclub.com to get that, or crestfest.org, and uh, get your ticks on the way. Tell them Grandpa sent you, okay? Grandpa Coyote, yeah, right. Yeah, well, we even say the grandfather of the heart. They'll know it, because that's who I am, man. You know. Well, locally, sometimes I'm known as, Ah, oh, that guy! <laughs> I keep them on their toes, man. <laughs> How else you gonna blossom a rose but keep it on its toes, man? I mean, you know, shoot. It's the way I, I, I molly coddle you guys here on the radio. I just let it all hang out, you know. The locals, well, they get a little dose here, a little dose there. It's coyote fun, man, you know. <laughs> it's mischievous as I'll get out, too. Just like the land around us. Man, it's all the ultimate joke, but beautifully, poetically, gracefully, and graciously given, man. I mean, wow. I'm gazing at purple flowers now just outside of my window, and I live up here in the mountains where such things, well, it shouldn't even be, but here it is, beauty, man, life, love, you know, the golden light of the sun everywhere, man. It's the beginning of a whole new life, a whole new experience, you know. This moment onward, man, is awesome, you know. And ain't allowing it to be anything else. How about you? Are you going to stay in that flow? I thought so. TheCoyoteClub.com Coyotes with a K Club is too, and we love you for it too, babies. And, you know, the soft embrace of the heart goes on, of course, forever, but we doubly and triply acknowledge it right now. And, uh, Mr. Tom keeps jumping up on the stage and looking at me with kind of a scowl on his face. He thinks I'm being a bit elongated in my rapage, so perhaps I should let uh, old Tommy have his way, okay? Babies, let your heart out to play today and shine bright, man. Just be the light that you want to see in others, okay? <laughs>